Hi, I'm Ben Canning. This micro lecture is on free body diagrams. As always, you need three or more bullet points worth of notes, a one to two sentence summary, and to do your follow-up questions on Google Forms. All right, so sometimes drawings can be too complicated. For example, if I want to draw this diagram of a book, it's pain um, to go ahead and draw the table as well as the book and things like that. So usually in physics, we're going to simplify things. Um, namely, we're going to simplify them with free body force diagrams. These are diagrams that show the forces on something. Um, that is, the forces acting on this book, not the forces it's applying to other things. Uh, and we're going to simplify things with that. Uh, so in free body diagrams, anything in the world can be represented as a box or a dot. And then when we um, draw them, we just draw the forces acting on that object. So if this were my book, we'd have the force from the table on it and the force due to gravity acting on that book. Um, we don't label or include anything else on the free body diagram. However, we can include additional information over here if we want to. So the rules for a free body diagram are the following. First, represent your object as a box or a dot. I like to use a box because you can fit multiple forces on each side. Next, draw arrows to represent all forces. Remember, these are the vectors. Um, remember, bigger arrows mean bigger forces. Uh, next, go ahead and, and um, make sure that all forces get connected to the box or dot, so no free floating ones. Uh, and then last but not least, label forces and include values. All right, so if you have a person sitting in a desk, the person weighs 742 newtons, go ahead and draw a free body diagram for them. If you want to, go ahead and pause and see if you can remember what to do. All right, welcome back. So in this case, if we draw a free body diagram, we can start by imagining that there are two forces on this person, namely the normal force, that's the force from the desk, as well as their weight, that's the force due to gravity pulling them down. So to draw a proper free body diagram, we would just move this kind of arrow diagram we've been doing before over here to the right, and we would make sure to include the numbers. So in this case, the normal force is 742, because it's canceling out the weight since the person isn't moving. Now, if we were actually just drawing a free body diagram, this is all you would need. So you wouldn't need to include the person there or anything else. You would just draw this. You might over here on the side say a person or things like that. Let's try another one. Uh, so draw a free body diagram for a person standing still. The person weighs 782 newtons. So go ahead and pause the video, see if you can imagine what it would look like and or draw it on your paper on your own. Alright, welcome back. And in this case, the free body diagram would look like this. So we have the normal force of 782 newtons, uh, that's the force from the ground. And then we have the force of their weights, uh, that is 782 newtons. I forgot to include the newtons there, uh, please forgive me for that. Uh, and that's it. So those would be the two forces. All right, let's have one more example. This one's a little bit more complicated. We have a little girl pushing a wagon. So a small girl pushes a wagon with a force of 200 newtons, and the wagon weighs 150 newtons. I want you to draw the free body diagram for the wagon. Go ahead and pause, see if you can do it on your own. All right, welcome back. And in this case, we know that the wagon weighs 150 newtons, so let's start with that. Weight equals 150 newtons. Now the wagon's not sinking into the sand um, or falling in this case, so we know that there's also a normal force or a force from the sand or the ground pushing up on it, and that is 150 newtons. Um, but we also need to include the girl's push. So that one, since the girl was uh, pushing it to the left, we would put a force on the wagon, pushing it to the left. I'd label it as F and then push, just say that's from the push, and we say that it's 200 newtons. Notice that these two vectors are the same size, since these values are the same size. But this vector is slightly bigger than these because this is 200 instead of 150, so it should have a bigger vector. That's it for this one. Three or more bullet points worth of notes, a one to two sentence summary, and please do your follow-up questions on Google Forms.